had a couple people uh, ask me about how to um, walk through how to upload art through various different uh, print-on-demand sites. So I thought I'd show you um, today how I go about uploading a new design on Spoonflower. Um, most sites generally have a what a spec of the technical specs of the file types that they need. So keep an eye out for that. So I'm going to show you how to look for that. So here we are at Spoonflower and I need to log in so that you can see um, design and uh, how you can so I can upload. But first of all um, you see this where it says designing frequently asked questions, design tools. Every website, every print on demand is going to have somewhere they're going to have frequently asked questions or guidelines, uh, templates that you can download. And that's what you want to look for because that's what's going to help you make sure that you have the right uh, specifications. Um, so under their designingly frequently asked questions, I'm looking for um, what kind of files. See how it says what kind of files can I upload? That's what you want to find for whatever site that you're on. So they say they recommend a JPEG or a PNG file at 150 DPI. It has to be under 40 megabytes. Okay, um, and then related, how big should my image be? We're going to click on that, um, and it's going to walk you through the specifications um, when. For Spoonflower specifically, um, they want you to upload, and this is true of most print-on-demand sites, they want you to upload the, the actual repeating tile. Um, so not like the, um, you know, let's say you're printing a, you know, a yard of fabric. And so this, you know, that's usually 20, uh, uh, 28 inches by... 56 inches or and you're not going to be uploading a file that's 28 inches by 56 inches you want to upload the 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 repeating tile just the repeat so let me show you so I have some of my first of all let me show you in Illustrator how I export my repeating tile so um, I'm going to open up um, one of my illustrator files where I have the design. So this is a couple of the different designs that I have. And um, so easiest thing to do, let's say let's do this pink one here. I'm going to go over here to my swatches panel and I'm just going to drag that pattern here onto the work area, work desktop. So there's, it's not an artboard right now. So, and it's grouped together already automatically. That's how it comes out of the swatches panel. Let's see if I move it around. But if you dive in here, you can see, you know, these are all my different elements. And if you go all the way to the bottom here, you've got one. This is the, this was the bounding box, the blank, no fill, no stroke bounding box for the pattern. And then above that is the background. The important thing about uh, avoiding that dreaded white line that you can sometimes get around your tile when you export it uh, is to make that the background, whatever color background, slightly larger than uh, than the bounding box. Um, so. I have actually recorded a default action because I realized I was just repeating this thing over and over again. And I will show you what it's doing is first you want to take this, this blank bounding box and you want to convert it to an artboard. Um, to save yourself some time you can actually record these two steps as actions but I will show you how to manually do that. So you make sure you have your that back layer bounding box, the no stroke, no fill bounding box selected, and you go up to object, artboards, and select convert to artboards, and it's going to make it into an artboard. See, it disappeared and now it's actually an artboard. 
Now you want to we want to take that background color and just make it slightly bigger than our artboard. So again, make sure you have it selected. And you can either just drag it out, but to be a little bit more precise, I right click and select transform scale. And I just bump it to like 105%. So I know it's just going to be slightly bigger than the boundary box. And you can click OK. So see now it is larger than my artboard. All right. Now you can back out of that group, double click and back out. Now I have a new artboard that has that repeating pattern on it. Now if you go up to uh, File, Export, Save for Web, it's going to show you, boom, here is that repeating pattern, just the tile. And here is where you can adjust all the different settings for your export. Now, Spoonflower said specifically they wanted 150 dpi, JPEG, and they work in RGB. So um, you want to under, actually, actually, here's actually instead of doing export safer web, we want export for screens. And you want to click so right now it's on assets. Actually, I want to go to my artboard. Sorry. So there we are. So this is the same thing, but this gives me the options for setting my resolution. Because specifically for Spoonflower, 150 uh, DPI is what you want. Or pick, DPI and pixels per inch are the same. JPEG is what we want. And you select where you want it to save. So, you know, what folder you want to save. And you can set a prefix around, say, uh, spoon power. And select export artboard. Now it opened it up here. You can see now this is my repeating pattern. Now the downside of this is it actually exported it as uh, I believe as a CMYK. So I'm going to check that in Photoshop. And I'm going to bring this over here into Photoshop. Image under image, you have mode, and sure enough, it says it saved it as a CMYK. So you just want to select RGB color under mode, so it's going to convert it just like that. Now it's an RGB, and you want to save. And I always make sure my slider is at 100% because you don't want to lose file quality when you're uploading it to a print-on-demand site. So, uh, RGB file, save, okay? So now we should have that tile right here. This is your repeating tile in RGB 150 DPI. So, now Spoonflower should be happy. Okay, so on Spoonflower, you want to click on the Design and Cell Upload Your Design. It's going to bring up the Upload window, and you want to choose that file, that tile we just exported. Um, yeah. And you have to select I own the rights. Yes, I have permission to do that. And then click Upload. And it's going to take a little bit to process. Doo -doo. Depending on how large a uh, file it could take longer or shorter depending on how large your file is. Which mine is, let's see for example, this is 
should not take that long. Okay, there you go. Okay. Ah, <laughs> I uploaded the wrong file. Okay, so look, but let me show you how you can fix that. So you want to select, either you can just say delete design and start over, or, but if you, let's say, need to make a change to your image, you want to click on this upload revision and choose the right file. So let's make sure I've got the right file. Where did I put it? Is it here? There it is. Okay, that's the one I want. And you click on the upload revision. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do that? You say yes. And it's going to do its thinky thing again. Oh, okay. There we go. That's the one we want. All right. So there's our file. Uh, my complaint about Spoonflower a little bit is that sometimes it's hard to judge scale just from a screen. So you really need to pay attention here to these rulers, okay? So this is in inches, right? And right now you're previewing what a fat quarter would look like, all right? Um, so this seems to be about the scale that we had. So we uploaded it about this was this was the size of the repeat. So everything looks good. Now there are a few things that you can adjust. You can make your design smaller, but you can't make it any larger than your original tile. Does that make sense? If you if you want it to be bigger, you have to go back to Illustrator and re-export it at a higher file size. Um, you'd have to go back to the export, save for screens. Um, and adjust, like you can actually export this at 300 dpi and it will make it bigger. Um, sometimes I will do that, I will actually export my file to size that I know is larger than I need it because then I can have a little bit more flexibility of making it bigger and smaller right in Spoonflower itself. But this looks fine. Um, and you can actually go through here and see like this is what a yard of the fabric would look like at different angles. Um, you can see with the test swatch will show you a closer view. You can look to see, make sure everything, um, uh, look for any major errors. Um, pay attention, you know, for the white line, but just be aware that occasionally the preview will give you a faint gray line, even if there isn't really one. Um, but the best way really is to order a test swatch <laughs> to make sure. And Spoonflower uh, requires that before you can offer it for sale. Which, um, here's the tip. I um, will upload you know, uh, about, I'll wait till I have about 30, I think 30 or 30 or 20 to 30 designs ready to go. Upload them all at once and then do a fill a yard project where you can do um, multiple patterns in one um, yard of fabric. And that costs, it's like what a normal yard of fabric costs, like $18, rather than spending the $10 or the $5 per yard. Like if you're going to do, the, sorry, if you're going to do a test swatch, which is like $5 per test swatch for each design, you know, say 20 designs, that adds up really quickly. But if you do the fill a yard, you do the same thing, but it's a yard of fabric, and then you can, you'll spend much less money that way. So that is what I would recommend, is to wait until you have, um, enough designs to to do it that way. So hopefully that helps. I will be doing some more videos on some of the other print-on-demand sites show you how I upload them. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message and I will answer.